Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and this is a, not really a response video, but kind of a uh, dedication maybe, or, or, or just uh, hello even, to a YouTuber I found today that was pretty cool to watch. Um, his real name is Billy, Billy Core, uh, and he's on YouTube known as Road Geek. He... He's been around for a while. He's got about 2,300 subscribers. And the, the thing I really like... God, it's warm in here. The thing I really like about Billy's channel is... He, he's not, like, putting on any airs. He, he talks about... He's a big uh, lover of nostalgia. So he mainly talks about, like, old Nickelodeon shows he liked as a child. He collects old Packard Bell computers that he enjoyed when he was a kid. Um... What else? He... What else was he talking Oh, he is a big, big fan of this local mall called the Carolina Circle Mall, I believe. And he has a blog about it, and he's been interviewed uh, a couple times at his local news station. And um, he had done a video recently. I think it was called, like, uh, Hope for People with Depression and, and Autism. Um... He had, he had opened up to his, you know, YouTube fans or friends and stated how he does suffer from depression sometimes and he's never been diagnosed, though he thinks he may have a mild case of Asperger's, which I found kind of interesting because he does, um, I know with Asperger's, I have, I have friends with Asperger's, he does, um, with Asperger's you tend to fixate on things. And I mean this in no offense, Billy, so I'm going to send you this video and if you watch it and offend you, I, I thoroughly apologize. Uh, I really do like your videos a lot. Uh, fixation isn't always a bad thing, you know. I mean, I fixate on video games and Sega CD and movies and Blu-rays and DVDs. I have, like, over a thousand movies, so it's just, uh, you know, it is what it is. But he, uh, he, he's really, I don't want to use a ne kind of negative connotation because I'm not, I don't mean it that way. But he's really into this, uh, this mall that had, he had been to as a child and had some fond memories of called the Carolina Circle Mall, and, um, you know, even though I don't live close by, I'm in New York, and he's in the Carolinas, or I'm not really sure where in the Carolinas, um, it's just interesting hearing someone have such love and nostalgia for something, you know, that they really enjoyed as, as kids, I mean, in essence, that's all we're doing on YouTube, a lot of my friends on here, you know, uh, Sega Bits, Crack Lotus, um, Sega of my house, you know, all these people, Keithy Huntington that I'm friends with, we're all doing the same thing as Billy Core. We're all focusing and fixating on things that, uh, you know, were different or weird to us that we found unique that just bring us back to our childhood or make us recapture some, some sort of semblance of our childhood, um, which I think is kind of cool. I don't know what that says about adulthood. <laughs> I mean, it might, it might mean that uh, we just look at childhood as, as a better point in life. I mean, I personally, uh, I love thinking about my childhood and, and all the, the good times I've had with friends and games and technology and stuff like that, but I also do love where I am in life now because you have, uh, I'm 30, which is weird to hear, um, you do have a lot of freedoms when you get older, you know, you can do whatever the fuck you want when you want, and uh, I like that, I like being, you know, I, I love my family and my wife and my pets and, you know, um, there's a lot of things I have that I'm very grateful for, so... I guess what I'm getting at, as fun as it is to be rooted in some kind of nostalgia, it's also nice to reflect on the good things you have now. But I wanted to just tell Billy, uh, you know, straight out, I, I really like your channel. Uh, I, I find it really cool that you collect all these old computers. And I wanted to share a quick story about, or maybe not so quick, about my first computer. So, uh, initially my cousins had a old computer, I don't know the brand, and they would let me on AOL, which AOL, if you were in the 90s, was the definitive ISP. Everyone used their internet service provider was primarily AOL, I think. So, um, nobody really uses it anymore except older people and uh, people on AOL Instant Messenger, which also isn't really used frequently because people use Facebook now. Stuff like that. Um, it was kind of, if you don't know what AOL is, it was kind of an um, all-in-one, a catch-all. You know, it, it had an instant messaging program. It had chat rooms built into it. You 
can surf the web through AOL's browsers, kind of like you do with Internet Explorer or Google Chrome or the like. Um, you know, you could, the AOL had its own like little things, like games and stuff built in, things like that. So my cousins had it, and they would like log me in to a chat room with either people my age or people, maybe a community that was into the same stuff I was. And they, you know, they monitor me and make sure I wasn't like they come in every so often to make sure I wasn't doing anything wrong. But I always thought it was really cool looking up like bands I liked, or I remember specifically um, one of the rap groups I like, uh, which is now sort of broken up. I think they get back together for concerts every so often. Is the Far Side? They're like a I don't know what you'd call them, like a, it's like a rap group, but not heavy, it's, you know, very melodic and, and kind of jazzy or whatever in a way, and um, they're from California, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, I would look them up and read stuff about them and talk to people in chat rooms about things, so I was always really excited after that and, and hounding my parents to get me my first computer. They ended up getting a second-hand computer for free from a friend of ours, or their friend, really, she's my parents' age, and... Uh, I guess she had upgraded or someone had one if they were getting a new one. And I was really excited. I mean, it, it didn't seem as up-to-date as my cousins, but it, it seemed like something, you know. And at that point, when you're, it must have been about 12 or 11, you know, you'll, you'll go for anything. You don't care what it is. You know, you just want to do what everyone else is doing with this computer and, and, and learn and figure it out. Um, as Billy had said in his videos, you know, everyone is, is kind of growing up with computers now to where kids have tablets and computers in their hands so when they get older they, they know how to maneuver and use them and do things with them where when I was growing up and when he was growing up and I'm sure many of you you had to teach yourself everything you know and there was no internet at one point so whatever you did on the computer was more just like basic crap so anyhow uh, she, I get this computer and I'm pretty sure uh, the person before me had been using I want to say it was either Juno or CompuServe or one of those older ISPs, and that's how they got around with it. So my parents called up, or Earthlink, something like that. They called up and tried to get me an account, you know, to pay every month to use the phone and get me on a couple things. <laughs> the ISP said, we're no longer supporting those computers because they're so old that I guess you can't use their ISP, you know, correctly or... or doesn't have enough hardware, you know, good hardware to, to run it. So that kind of sucked. So it was like, it was in my grasp, but it just didn't work out. My parents ended up getting rid of it because this huge clunky computer wasn't going to do me any good. Um, you know, if I couldn't get on the internet, obviously. So uh, fast forward a few years, I think it was my first year of high school. So I was 13. Um, I was actually the youngest, I think, in my school to graduate. I think I was 17 when I graduated. Almost everyone else was 18. So, because I'm born in December. So it just happened to fall that way when I went to school, you know. Um, so my first computer was a Gateway. I think it was a Gateway 2000, but I'm not 100% on that. It had 200 megahertz MMX Pentium 1 with, I want to say 32 megs of RAM and either a 2 or 4 gig hard drive. Because at one point, the hard drive crashed, and I shipped it back to Gateway. Or maybe I didn't. And they mailed me back a double-sized one, and I thought I had a lottery, you know? And I think it was... I think it was 8 gigs. I think, they, I, think I had a 4, and they gave me an 8. And I remember my 4 was filling up. Um, but I just wanted to talk briefly about getting that computer and, and what, you know, what I remember. So I got this computer, and back then, you know, now you could just buy kind of a computer by itself and kind of piece it together. Then everything was packaged and, you know, everything was bought on, like, QVC or on the phone or on the website. And uh, it was a gateway, like I said, and it was expensive. I think my parents had spent, like, almost $2,000. It was, like, 1600 bucks on this computer, which, in hindsight, was a lot of money. I mean, now you spend that kind of money and you get, like, a top-of-the-line, like, gaming machine, you know? So, I had, uh, I think I was off from school, so I'm not sure if it was this summer or what. And I kept popping in all these computer games I kept buying when I was out. And one of the first games I played was Blood, which is still one of my favorite computer games of all time. It's a very funny first-person shooter with a lot of gore. Um, if you haven't played it, check it out. But I also remember popping in Toonstruck with um, Christopher Lloyd. And I always loved FMV games and games with digital characters or actors in gaming. So I thought it looked really like a really cool point-and-click adventure game. 
and sadly it froze my machine and I could never get it to work. So between that and Redneck Rampage, I never got it to run on my computer. I own them both. I don't think I have them anymore, um, you know, on disc. But uh, I could never get them to work for some reason. But Toonstruck like froze the machine. It was like my first day ever of having a computer. I remember calling my dad and saying, "Dad, um, it's frozen. I don't know what to do." And he was like, "Well, we just spent X amount on this computer," and he got like kind of mad at me. You better not fucking break it. And I was like, "Oh my god." So I had to figure out, you know, hold the button or unplug it, whatever. Uh, I think at that point I didn't know you could hold the button for 10 seconds. So it came with speakers and a microphone and a monitor and, you know, the, the keyboard and the mouse. And, and I still, till this day, have the speakers and subwoofer. And they sound great. I still use them with my current desktop, which, you know, doesn't get as much use as my laptop. But I still enjoy sitting down at a desk more so than plopping a laptop on my lap, honestly. So, um... That was my first computer, and uh, my friend Jordan, what's up Jordan, he was a big computer guy with me, he was one of the first people I met when I moved to my school from um, the Bronx, I went from the Bronx out here to Long Island, and uh, you know, we were bit, both big like nerds, I guess, into computers and video games and movies and the Matrix and all that type of stuff, cyberpunk, so we would talk about like RAM and hard drive space like it was fucking gold, and we used to make punters and progs on AOL 3.0, which I think they eventually fixed on 4.0. And what punters and progs, which they're dead now, um, are, it's it's something with a uh, graphic user, inter user interface that you would download, and it would usually have a theme to it. Like, mine had, like, a Lost Boys theme. I made a Goonies one, I think. I made a uh, Wu-Tang Clan one, I think, at one point. I made a... Like, all, all based with different things. Cypress Hill. And... It would um, let you go on it and then manipulate AOL to do things you shouldn't, like kick people offline, um, scroll things in rooms that would, you know, freeze up people's computers. It was kind of like fucked up shit, but kind of like to be goofy. It wasn't like really looking to hurt anyone or in intentionally hurt their hardware to where it was broken. It wouldn't like break anyone's computer. It would just kind of screw up their AOL and then like sign them off and they have to sign back on. That's primarily what it was. Um, but... It was a big scene back in the 90s, and, um, you know, AOL went the way of the dodo, so these things went that way as well, and um, it just was a lot of fun, really interfacing with my friend Jordan. I still talk to him. He only lives a few blocks from me, and uh, we still keep in touch. We're still great friends, and it was cool being a part of that, you know, even though I wasn't doing much. I think I was using v Virtual Basic, Visual Basic. Jeez, it was like a really early version. I don't remember at this point. And, you know, I was taking people's codes off the internet and manipulating them to make them work for me. But to think that I taught myself something like that, very basically at least, um, at that age, was pretty cool. Um, now it's, you know, I think very different to make programs, of course. But back then it was fun. And uh, we'd have cool programs like mPlayer and Heat.net, which I think Sega owned at one point. And mPlayer was like a multiplayer service like GameSpy. I used GameSpy then too, but... I found it to be kind of bloated compared to M Player, so I didn't use it as much then. And you play Blood Online and Quake and Get Medieval and all these great PC games. Um, you'd even be able to just download demos and just play the first few levels online with people. This was back when um, you'd have to know people's TCP IP address or IP address, and you have to know all the data to connect to them directly. And if you didn't have that, you were kind of screwed. But mPlayer and Heat.net and GameSpy let you log into, a, again, like a graphic user interface where you would be able to chat with them or talk to them and play directly through this and not have to type really anything in. So it was very simplistic and streamlined. Um, now everything just has, you know, multiplayer built into the games. Back then it wasn't like that as much. Um, so I think that's really it. I, I just wanted to tell, uh, you know, those, those stories about my first computer, uh, some nostalgia I had for gaming on the computer and some funny or goofy stories with making punters and stuff. And uh, just tell tell Billy I appreciate his channel. I really like it. Guys, I'll put his channel down in the description. Check him out. He seems like a very nice guy. And uh, that's really it. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.